Hello everybody, welcome back to Read and Reread. I'm Angelia and today I am doing the Phenomenal Woman Tag. This is an original tag created by my friend Marilyn Maya Mendoza. It is her uh, first original tag, which is one more than I've ever invented. And she created this tag to celebrate the month, the readathon that she has created this month, celebrating phenomenal women writers. Uh, also, Maya Angelou and Marilyn Maya Mendoza herself as she celebrates her fourth year on BookTube and her birthday month. And so this is a short tag as far as questions go, and it zeroes in on phenomenal women writers and characters. So just three questions, but that doesn't really mean that it's short or simple because there's so many great answers to these questions but I'm gonna to try to rein it in. When I first looked at the questions, I thought of just tons. Like I thought of, oh no, there's you know, 10, 12 people I have to mention, but I don't. I don't have to mention all of them. Just because I mentioned a few doesn't mean I don't love other ones too. It's, it's a tag, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to just pick a few. So I, I'm going to attempt to do that. And there are many uh, good, versions of this tag out already even though it's only existed for about a week and so you might hear some books or authors or characters that you heard of already but you know what if you keep hearing about the same book and you haven't read it yet what is that telling you i know what it tells me that's that's why i have all these books i've bought that i haven't read yet but anyway all right i'm gonna cut out the preamble let's let's get to the the questions in this tag Number one, who is your favorite phenomenal woman author? Oh, you know, so simple yet so complicated. That that's the one I saw. I got stuck right there. I got stuck right there. I saw it last week and I thought, okay, it's gonna take me a full week to think about this tag. Uh, so, but I'm I have narrowed it down and just to talk about just a few people and why they are so phenomenal to me. So here we go. And I pulled some books. Um, I'm not recommending specific books, but I just, I, I need visual prompts. So first of all, Octavia Butler, and this is one of her books that I love very much, Parable of the Sower. Octavia Butler, I have selected because she has never written the same book twice. Every, every one of her works is surprising, inventive. You could classify them as science fiction, speculative fiction, dystopian fiction, sometimes fantasy. But that only tells you a piece of the story. They are always startling and not what you expected and uncomfortable and thought-provoking and prescient. And that's why I love Octavia Butler. Also, Emily St. John Mandel. Uh, I, just, this is, I just pulled The Glass Hotel because I, I talk about Station Eleven incessantly, so I pulled a different book. But Emily St. John Mandel, in her last few books, I've read a couple of her earlier books and they were good, but they didn't, they didn't just take up residence in my mind and make me keep thinking and turning them over and wondering about them the way she, the way her most recent books do. Like she's hit some kind of a stride and I cannot wait to see what she comes out with next. But again, these, these are hard to categorize. There's, um, there's connections between her last three books, but one of them is almost realistic fiction, but, but you know, a couple of strange things occur. Maybe a ghost or two is in there, but it's not a ghost story. Maybe something um, kind of alternative happens, but it's not speculative. Um, she just, she doesn't fit neatly into a category and I don't know where she's going with the story, but, and then it, the prose is beautifully written and emotional and the characters are intriguing. And I love Emily St. John Mandel. Uh, then we have to go back in the past. Jane Austen, um, she only has six completed novels and then she has some uh, juvenilia and um, non-completed non work. But I, and you know, again, I'm not going to say that Jane Austen is constantly surprising because there's no surprises left, really. I've read them so many times and there is a certain world and a certain atmosphere that exists in all the books, but they don't have the same plot. They don't have the same characters. Um, they do explore some themes in common. They are comfort reads, but they're not fluffy. 
And I do find new things revealed to me every time I reread Jane Austen. If I had to go to a desert island, I'm, I would take this omnibus with me, even though I'm working on collecting separate editions. This is, this is Old Faithful. And then finally, I have to, I have to include Elizabeth Strout. Uh, this is my favorite book out of the Lucy Barton uh, quartet that's about to be a quintet, I believe. Well, none of us know. We don't know if it's an Olive Kittredge book with Lucy in it or a Lucy Barton book with Olive in it, but we're going to find out very soon in September. But Elizabeth Strout, clear, concise, brilliant, emotional. Somehow it's it's not, there's no uh, flowery gymnastics of language. It's just sharp and insightful, but it's not, it's not spare to where you're sitting there and thinking, oh, this is so stark. There, it, somehow there's nuances and depths and layers, complicated people, uh, some really dark themes. I mean, it's not, it's so funny how something could be a comfort read and dark as hell, but Elizabeth Strout does this. You can read it, reread it, and you go, oh my gosh, I don't even remember that. How could I forget something like that? It, it's just, it's, it's so good. It's so rich in, I love Lucy and I love Olive. I'm cheating now because I'm throwing in characters and that's the next question. Okay, question two. What book features your favorite phenomenal woman character? One book? Are you kidding? Are you kidding, Maya? Okay, no, we gotta do a few. So many. I could, I, I, when I first read that question, I briefly thought about, I could do an entire library tour where we just stroll around and I talk about all the characters I love. But that would be a very long tour. So instead, let's just, let's zero in again on just a few. We have Yoli from All My Puny Sorrows. This is a new character to me but I am going to love her forever and reread this book. Uh, I know that Priscilla just mentioned Yoli and her version of the tag, and I was like, oh, Yoli, you stole my answer. But she didn't steal my answer. Uh, great minds just think alike. So I am also gonna talk about Yoli. I'm not, I'm not gonna get into all the details of these books, but this is a book about two sisters. It's about family. It's also about uh, mental illness and suicide and uh, how best to honor your loved ones. And Yoli is a, Yoli, <laughs> she is absolutely heartbreaking, but she's hilarious. And she's a struggling uh, mom of teenagers. She's in the middle of her second divorce and it, and it all with that going on. And she's trying to convince her sister to, to stay in this world and not take her own life. So it's, it sounds really depressing and sometimes it is, but it's somehow it's also funny and uplifting and beautiful. Also, I have mentioned this character so many times. Every time there's a tag that talks about a character, I mentioned Tookie from The Sentence. I still haven't reread this book and there's older Louise Erdrich books that I want to read again and ones I've never read, and then she's coming out with a new one in October. So I am, I'm trapped in a Louise flood, but I love Tookie so much. She is a character in this book. She lives in Minneapolis. She uh, gets out of prison for a, a crime that is pretty absurd, and she gets a job in a bookstore. The bookstore is haunted. It's not really a ghost story. It's a realistic fiction story, and it takes place in Louise Erdrich's own bookstore, Birch Bark, in Minneapolis, and then COVID comes along, things get complicated, and again, it's one of those ones, it's, it's, it's deep, it's, uh, at times it'll make you angry, sad, it's funny, it's, it's just kind of everything. It really, I don't know if it's my favorite of her books. I need to read it again. When I read it, I thought, Damn, this is my favorite one. But then, you know, it's been a while since I read some of the other ones. So maybe it's my favorite. And then I cannot, I cannot leave out one of my all-time favorite women in literature, Jane Eyre. This, this isn't showing up very well on the camera, but this is actually a, a pretty edition. Uh, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Uh, I love that character. It's another one of those books that no matter how many times you read it, 
you think about different corners and parts large and small aspects relationships between characters but i find jane to be a remarkable individual i love how her character is developed from childhood to adulthood in a consistent and believable manner and the struggles that she faces and the decisions that she makes really hard decisions um and sometimes you wish she would maybe do something a little different or think about something else or go a little faster or I don't know. I don't necessarily agree with all of her decisions or when she made them or why she made them, but I love her just the same. I love seeing her thought processes and I and I really respect her as a character even when I don't agree with her. And that that's a remarkable thing to say about a person who doesn't exist. So those are some of my favorite characters. Then there's one more question. If you were creating a book prize, what book by a phenomenal woman um, author would you choose? Well, I'm going to uh, skew the question just a little bit because my, my prize uh, actually is going out to a trio of women and the prize is called the Get Off the Stick Prize. And this is a prize that recognizes the phenomenal writing and the phenomenal just nature of these women and their brilliance. But at the same time, would you please hurry up and put out a new book? So it's, 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 a, it's a prize, maybe it's in the shape of a cattle prod, I don't know. But here's, here's the recipients of this year's prize. Uh, and we're going to go in order from the someone who's not particularly tardy, but I just want her to hurry up and do a new book, uh, just to someone who, she's so tardy, it's even part of her name. All right, so first we have Deja Filia. I loved this short story collection, The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. This was published in 2020. So she's not just outrageously late, but I'm really eager to see. Is she going to do another story collection? Is she going to do a novel? Please do something, D. Shafilia. I love, I love discovering you in this book, and I, I want more. Then we have Sarah Waters. Sarah Waters. It's been 10 years. I, I've been hearing for two years that your book is about to come out. Where is it? Where is it, Sarah Waters? I, I'm, I'm about to just go backwards and start rereading things because I, I need some Sarah Waters. I love this novelist. This was her most recent one. Came out in 2014. A lot has happened since then. I need a new book. And then, last but not least, but definitely the latest, Donna Tart. Donna Tarty herself. When, when did the last book come out? Now, here's another sad fact. This is the only book of hers I have. She has three novels. The first one, somebody borrowed and never returned, The Secret History. This is the second one. And then The Goldfinch, which tragically I read as a library book. I, I was not far into this book before I thought, why didn't I buy this? And I haven't, I haven't bought a copy since because I thought, I don't know if I'm going to reread it, but I might. I just, I just kind of wish I had it. I don't have a good grounds for buying it. Like if I run into it at a thrift store and it's a dollar, then I'm going to buy it. But uh, anyway, here's here's one of her books, The Little Friend. And Donna Tart. When, when did The Goldfinch even come out? It's been, I think it's been like 12 years. Donna, come on. I mean, life is life is continuing. The years are passing. What are you doing? And it better be good. That's all I have to say. All right, so that's my get off the stick prize. The last part is about tagging people. I have watched several versions of this and the tag list were incredibly long. Like everybody I've ever heard of that I could possibly think of to tag has already been tagged. And I even had the idea of tagging some of the men uh, and then Pat included that too. So uh, I, I'm just gonna say, if you were tagged and you haven't yet gotten around to it, I hope that you will have time to do it now or in the future, because I know we all share in a love of phenomenal women writers. And also, I love my friend, Marilyn Maya Mendoza, and happy birthday to you. And I've been enjoying your month of phenomenal women events. And that's where I'm gonna stop for now. So let me know what you think about any of these authors, these characters, what you would uh, answer instead or in addition. And if you have other um, candidates, for my get off the stick prize, throw them in the comments as well. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.